Hi everybody, welcome back to my video blog. Today we're going to talk about silicone implants, but in particular we're going to talk about uh, silicone implants in terms of their shapes and sizes and profiles. Traditionally, silicone implants have always been round. Okay. Now, whenever we talk about the shape of an implant, what we're effectively referring to is what it looks like when you actually lay it down on the table like this. Now, if you look at this implant, or all these implants, for example, you'll see they've got a generally got a round look. That doesn't necessarily mean what they look like when you stand them up, but when they're on the table, they're round. Traditionally, everybody thought, well, we want to avoid the round stuck on look. When you lift up a round implant, okay, gravity tends to take effect on it. And what happens is that the bottom end of the implant falls down and the upper bit empties out a little bit, thereby giving you a slight teardrop effect. That's what gives breast implant its natural look, if you like. Because you can imagine, if I lay this on my chest like this, okay, because of gravity, it's going to fall down into a teardrop effect. Because of this, people wanted to get a little even more natural. So about 15, 20 years ago, they came out with what they call the teardrop. Now the teardrop implant looks different when you pluck it on the table compared to a round one. Now here's the round one, and here's a teardrop one. As you can see here, it's higher at one end than it is on the other end, and so thereby giving it a slight slope look. So on the table, this implant looks different to this, which effectively, the idea of this was to give you a teardrop effect on the breast as well. So if I lay this on my chest like that, you can see it's got a natural slope here. It's higher at one end, lower on this end, thereby giving you what we call a teardrop effect. Now, having said that, that's not too different from what the round one gives you when you actually lift it up. And in fact, when I put them side by side like this, you can see that um, this one also giving you a little bit of a teardrop effect, albeit not quite as slopey as this side is, okay? That's not necessarily a bad thing because for many ladies, uh, one of the problems they have is they feel that they've gotten empty in the upper half of their breast. They feel, you know, there's not much there. By having a little bit more on the round one here compared to the, the teardrop one, it actually addresses that problem. So what I'm going to say is, is that the teardrop one is not necessarily the most natural one because even the round implant will actually fall into a teardrop effect, okay? Now, one other issue which many people forget about is this. When we're actually creating a pocket to put these implants in or install these implants, the implants themselves, they're not actually screwed in or nailed in in any way, okay? They're actually, we make a very specific pocket for them and we lay the implant in. Now, this means that the implant itself can actually move around within the pocket. Now, in the case of a round implant, if a round implant, when you're standing up, okay, if it moves around, okay, say it rotates a bit, it doesn't really matter so much because gravity brings it down, back down again. So you still got the same effect. See, if I turn this upside down, you still got the same thing. Now, if I do the same for the round, for the, for the, sorry, for the teardrop one, apologies, this is a teardrop one, okay, now if I turn it around and rotate it, it's got an upside down look to it. It hasn't actually, doesn't fall into place like the round one does. If you have rotation of a teardrop one, you can get an out of shape breast in theory. And it has happened to me on, on, on two or three occasions over the years. And it's not something that's easily rectifiable either. You sometimes require another operation to actually re-rotate the implant and bring it back into what it should be looking like. There is always a potential worry uh, of rotation with any teardrop implant, despite the fact that we make very precise pocket uh, to not allow too much movement of the implant. So that's something people and patients need to bear in mind before they choose a teardrop effect. The other thing I want to talk to you a little bit about is about profile of implants. Now, it's a slightly abstract concept for some people, but try to make it as simple as you possibly can. These three implants, as you can see, are roughly the same size in terms of volume. But when you look at them, they look different. Okay? Now, how do they look different? Well, this one here looks wider than this one does, and this one looks even narrower than this one does. This is a low profile implant. This is what we call a full profile implant, and this is an extra high profile implant. What this basically means is for a given base or footprint of the implant, you can displace this volume in height accordingly. So in other words, if somebody's got a very narrow base footprint on their breast, okay, and they don't have much space in width-wise, we have to put all the volume in front rather than to the side. So in that situation, we probably want to choose something with a narrower base. So this is where, for the same type of volume or same size of implant, you would choose an extra high profile because that can fit 
in, this, in a very narrow chest footprint. If you have a very wide, broad chest, okay, and the patient doesn't want so much fullness, then we choose what we call a low-profile implant. And that just effectively uh, sits in the, underneath the breast, but doesn't project as much as does this implant. In fact, if you look at them from the side, you can see how much different they project. This one is narrower, as you can see, with the low profile right behind it. And this one here, however, is, is, is projects higher than this one does. This is more of a technicality, and from a surgical point of view, uh, as a surgeon, what I'll ask patients is I'll ask them, where would you like the volume displaced in your, in your breast? Would you like it more forward looking, or would you like it more towards the width? And accordingly, we will then choose whether we, we uh, advise a high profile or a low profile implant. It's, it's a small detail and not everybody gets involved with this from a patient point of view. And a lot of it will depend on your chest dimensions and, and, and breast uh, measurements that we take beforehand. We will then advise you accordingly. But this is something just for you to understand that there are different profiles of implants.